Welcome to Lab 8, week uh, 11. This is our final CAD lab for the semester. And this week we have to model the part shown in the schematic, as well as the handout. So we have to model it in 3D and then present 2D projections so that we have a top view, a front elevation, or and then a side view or an end elevation. Okay, so using these two drawings, we're going to develop our model, 3D model. Okay, there are a few things to note. Firstly, that this diameter is incorrect. It's supposed to be 12, not 20. So this is a typo. This is supposed to be 12. And uh, this symbol, depth 25, means that this hole goes for a distance of 25. So this is 25. From tip to front is 25. And this hole is not a, a straight hole, okay? It has a tapered end, something like you'd have with a drill bit. So you have to also model this conical shape when you're doing this uh, hole, <clears throat> All right? So there's no exact dimensions given, so you can assume. You can say that maybe this co this cylinder will be a total of 22, and then this cone will be a height of three, so that you have a total of 25. Or it could be 20 and five, or you can assume, yeah, but don't make it too drastic. So don't make it like 10 and 15, make it something believable. All right, so I'd, I would recommend 22 and height of three for the, for the cone. Okay, so for the face-to-face -face students at the moment, they are trying to model this on their own. I also recommend that you give this a go. Okay, so um, just a couple of things if... Uh, um, if you're having difficulties with this, this might help you out. The dynamic mode. If you go to your customize menu, customize menu and go through the different options, you might wanna turn on dynamic input. Okay, what dynamic input does is it allows you to enter values on the screen and also define direction. Okay, so let's say, for example, I turn this off. I turn off dynamic input and I draw a straight line, just a normal line. I now want to extrude this line down. So I click on extrude, click on the line, I bring my mouse down and I type in the distance, 100. You'll notice that it extrudes in the opposite direction. Okay, that's because if you don't have the dynamic input turned on, it'll extrude in the direction of the positive Z. Okay, so that's why when we turn on dynamic input, let me try the same thing again. We can specify distance as well as direction. Okay, so that blue, that box with the blue typing and uh, blue writing in it, that is our distance. And our mouse will define direction. So if I type in 100 here, I can now put it in the orientation that I wanted to go in the first place. Okay, so dynamic input is, it's always a good idea to have dynamic input turned on. Another important thing to note is when you are drawing your elevation, make sure you have your ortho mode turned on. Okay, especially when you're moving your UCS. You'll see if I turn off my UCS and I try and move my, if I turn off my ortho mode and I try and move my UCS, okay, I have free reign. And there's no guarantee that I'll get it exactly uh, 90 degrees. So let's say I don't set my UCS correctly and it's slightly off like this. I then draw a box. Okay. You'll see now that it's drawn crooked. All right, that's because my UCS was crooked to begin with. So always make sure that when you're moving your UCS, you have your ortho mode turned on. It makes things a lot easier.
Okay, and these will be tips that will be helpful too for the the CAD test, which we're holding next week in our lab session. All right, so I will uh, demonstrate how you might be able to develop this model. Uh, you can use this as your revision for your CAD test next week. So looking at our object, okay, we can break it down into a series of simple shapes. We can break it down into a cylinder, a box, another box, another box, another box, and another box. Okay, notice that I'm also numbering the empty spaces or the spaces that I'm going to subtract. All right, so this shape is nothing but a combination of boxes and cylinders and one cone for your, your inside shape. And so always try and first break down your shape into simple shapes and then model it from there, okay? It's, if you're able to clearly visualize the profiles, then you can draw this profile and extrude it. That's fine. But you'll notice that this cone doesn't go, doesn't go all the way through. This uh, cylinder doesn't go all the way through. So if you try and draw this shape and then extrude it, you'll only be able to extrude it to a distance of 32 and then you'll have to draw that profile again to extrude the rest of the way. So always a good idea just try to break down simple shapes. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to orient my UCS so that I'm drawing on the vertical plane. Okay, author mode turned on. I'm drawing on the vertical plane. And now I'll make it out of a series of boxes. So I have one box that is a distance of 64 and a height of 25 and a distance of 100, okay? This box here represents the base down here. So this is shape two that I'm drawing, okay? Next, I'm gonna draw shape one, which is a cylinder, which has a radius of 20. So my next shape will be a cylinder that starts from the midpoint and has a radius of 20, an extrusion distance. <coughs> distance of 32. Okay. All right, I have a cylinder and the basic shape. All right, now I want to try and union them so that I get rid of this bottom, uh, bottom semicircle. So I'll union these two shapes together. And something like this. All right, next I'm going to draw this box. So shape five and shape six. So what I wanna do is I want to draw all of the shapes that I want to be there. And then I'm gonna draw all the shapes that I'm gonna subtract and then move them to position and then subtract them. Rather than uh, uh, drawing apart then subtracting, then unioning, you know, like uh, back and forth. I'm just gonna try and do all of my unioning one shot and all of my subtracting one shot. Okay, so for my box, I'm gonna draw it with dimensions 38 by 45 with a distance of 68. And I move this into position from corner to corner and then union them together. Right, <clears throat> now I have all the basic shapes I'm going to draw my box here in the corner that I'm going to subtract, as well as my boxes down here that I want to subtract. So my first box will be from here and it'll have the following dimensions. Um, 25 by 28 with an extrusion distance of 32. I'll now subtract this from the overall shape. So that's my first shape that I want to subtract that is uh, that's shape six that I've drawn. I'm gonna draw sh shape three and shape four now. 
So shape three is a box which has 20 by six, a distance of 100. And another box which is 38 by six, a distance of 100. I'll now move these from midpoint to midpoint and union these two together. Okay, I'm unioning the shapes that I want to subtract. So this is the shape that I want to subtract from this big body. So I'll now move this from bottom midpoint to midpoint and subtract. Now I can subtract the big shape minus these two small shapes. Right, so I have something like this now. Okay, all that's left is for me to subtract the hole up here, as well as the hole with the cone at the end. So again, I will draw the 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 hole on this surface. So I'll make it a cylinder with a radius of six and a distance of twenty-two. And I'll add a cone with a radius of six and a height of three. Okay. So if you look at them, you have your cylinder and your cone. I want to union these two, then I move it to position and subtract again, similar to how we did the bottom shape. So I'll union these two and then move from center to center and subtract. Okay. All right, and you can, you can see the tip of the cone on the inside. All right, if I turn it to 2D wireframe and look from the side, okay, we can see that cone shape. So we need that cone shape to be in the object and it goes from point from point to the front surface, a total distance of 25. <clears throat> Finally, I'll draw my cylinder. So again, I'll move my UCS to a point on that surface, set it up, so X, Y. I'll draw a cylinder that has a radius of six. Extrusion distance doesn't matter because I'm going to subtract this shape. I'll now draw just some sketch lines that go 16 by 12. So at the end of this line will be the center for my circle. So I'll move my circle, my cylinder, sorry, from center to the end point, delete my construction lines and subtract the shape. Right. So that is uh, how I would break down this shape. Okay, there's not the only way, there's lots of other ways. And a good way to practice or to gain mastery over a software is to try multiple different approaches to model something. So with a simple shape like this, um, I recommend that you try and use other methods, maybe use some revolving techniques or some uh, lofting if possible to try and develop the same shape and the same geometries. Okay, in our next uh, recording, we'll start with the orthographic projections. <laughs>